Uh, namaste once again. So in the morning session, we had a discussion on lecture one and uh, lecture seven and eight. So in this workshop, we are going as per the lectures planned for the course UHV two, and in that process, now we are going to discuss lecture nine. So we started understanding human being. We saw that human being is coexistence of self and body, and then we explore the realities. Now we go further to see how the body is an instrument of the self. So you have done the introductory workshop, also attended the uh, refresher one part one workshop. So uh, certain part of the content is already known to you, but now in the following session, like in this session as well as the next session, we are going to have some fresh content to explore. So the content that you have already gone through, I will be going a little fast over it, assuming that you are. Already acquainted with the content, and then the fresh content that we are going to have uh, now, we'll try to pause and then explore it a little deeper. So we are talking about the human being. We are discussing the harmony at the level of human being, and as you could see, that there are four levels of living: human being, family, society, nature, or existence. Uh, and the process remains the same. And I think now we are into this process of self-exploration. So whatever is coming from my side is a proposal for you to investigate, explore. And uh, we are into this exercise also that whenever we listen to some proposal, we try to verify on the basis of our natural acceptance. Uh, we try to verify on the basis of our natural acceptance. And then we also try to live accordingly. So that we have the experiential validation also. And when you go to validate in experience, so when we interact with the human being, one minute. When we interact with the human being, we evaluate the behavior. One minute, I'll change my mouse. Dear participants, kindly wait. Kumar Bia is, uh, is coming to take the session. Kindly wait for a few minutes. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, my mouse was disturbing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please come. Yeah, yeah, the mouse now. <clears throat> So we saw that human being is coexistence of self and body. We also looked into the needs, activities, and response of the self and body in detail in the previous session. So I think we are now acquainted with with each of the terms that are that is mentioned here on the slide. And we can now see that self is a conscious unit, body is a material unit. So material essentially means that the activities in that unit are only in terms of recognizing and fulfilling. But when we say consciousness, there is another activity assuming which is there. And there was a question right now, uh, which we are discussing. So in the self, we can see, in the self means in me, there is activity of assuming. So whatever I recognize and fulfill is based on assuming. Now, whether that assuming is based on knowing or not is something to be explored. But in the self, if I see, I see that whatever I recognize is having an element of assuming there, and then only I fulfill. But that is not the same thing with the body. And thus the body is a material unit and I am a consciousness unit. So we can have one reflection here. Maya, can we have that reflection? Is there any question so far? Is there any question so far? Then I can take up the question. Norma, I don't have a question, but uh, uh, just now, which uh, we have discussed about knowing and assuming, I have yeah. something to share. Can I share? You want to share something over this? Yeah. Uh, please, Binavia. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, 
just now while at the end of the first session uh, i was responding to the poll uh, the quiz um, my dot i saw that uh, my daughter is calling me then after i finished it after two time i uh, recalled her uh, i called her again then uh, she said is everything all right she was a uh, little bit uh, worried about things uh, she said that uh, uh, mother is also not uh, uh, Taking up the phone and you are also not taking the phone. Is just is everything all right? So I said, oh yeah, yeah, everything is all right. She had an assumption that because every day we call her, uh, both the daughters we have at least once in a day that we call her. But due to some traveling uh, uh, on Saturday and Sunday, yesterday we couldn't call both of them. So she assumed that when they are not, they have not called uh, throughout the day. Must there must be something. <laughs> which is not uh, uh, okay so once she got to know that uh, everything is right when she knew this uh, she got comfortable so is that uh, we can relate to knowing and assuming when you assume something and if that is not according to the natural acceptance you become uncomfortable and once you get to know that uh, you become comfortable the entire thing remains the same nothing has changed but only by knowing she could become comfortable is that okay sir uh not exactly so i'll say that the initial part was also assuming the second part was also assuming only so one becomes comfortable with one kind of assumption one becomes uncomfortable with another kind of assumption but knowing is something else knowing means uh, that the self is a conscious entity the body is a material entity so whatever may be the problem in terms of health issue or something is something to do with the body it is not to do with the self so the information that we get remains in our imagination the information that we get is not something which becomes a part of knowing so knowing the reality as it is so i can know the human being as it is the relationship as it is the rest of existence as it is so when i get some information over phone from somebody so that is a set of information so initially before i got the information i had one set of assumption after getting the information i have another set of assumption isn't it now depending upon my assumption whether the information being given to me is true or false okay another assumption is that whatever information has come to me is true but again that remains in the domain of assuming only knowing is something else knowing means if i know something it continues in me so the content to know essentially is the innate harmony in the existence that is something to know okay whatever information we exchange remains in the imagination so that is in the domain of assuming recognizing and fulfilling only okay so knowing means uh, self verification yes is that true self verification is the process for knowing it's not knowing yeah, yeah. so knowing then, uh, how do we how do we go for self verification is it that what uh, we are doing okay this is what we are doing so getting so an information are... and then verifying it on ourselves then it becomes knowing is that true yes yes okay, okay. thank you sir thank you. so <clears throat> going further we can see that the body is a material entity i am a conscious entity and i am related to my body <clears throat> and i am coexisting with my body now in this coexistence of self and body there is exchange of information so i am passing on some information to the body and i also receiving some information from the body now when i am passing on information from myself to the body it goes as an instruction for example when i am talking to you i am instructing my body isn't it at the same time i am looking at the slide in front of me so i am reading the fonts i am reading the letters and words and that is coming as an information to me and the information that i am getting from the body is in the form of sensation so the information from the body to the self is sensation the information from me to the body is the instruction that i am giving to the body and this is the way i coexist with the body isn't it so this exchange of information is going on we can further study this exchange of information we we'll see that this exchange of information is again my choice my decision 
but that we'll study further. Now going further, we can see that I am there. <clears throat> I am a reality. I am there. Body is also there. Isn't it? So I am there. Body is also there. So neither I am a part of assumption nor this body is a part of assumption. I may not know the reality as it is, but it is very much there. It is existent. Another thing that I can see that I want to live. Okay. So the want to live is there in me. It is not there in the body. The body being a physiochemical entity is working as an instrument for me. So that want to live, the desire to live is there in me. There is no desire to live in the body. Body is just a physiochemical thing. It only has the activity of recognizing and fulfilling. So there is no desire as such. There is no want as such in the body. Isn't it? The want is there in me. Next thing that I can observe is, it's not that I only want to live. I want to live with happiness. And it's not that I only want to live with happiness. I want to live with continuous happiness. So this is my innateness. I am there and this want is innately there in me to live with continuous happiness. And that is essentially to say that I want to live with continuous harmony. So this is something innate to me. If you look at the body being a physiochemical entity, so there is no want to live with continuous happiness kind of thing in the body. The body being a physiochemical entity has the requirement for physiochemical things. And those physiochemical things are in terms of physical facilities and they're required for three purposes. One, nurturing the body. Two, protecting the body. And three, rightly utilizing the body. So we can very well see that whatever physical facility I require okay, is required for the body. It's not required for me. And it is required for three purposes. To nurture the body, to protect the body, and to rightly utilize the body. Now here I'd like to give you one task. So think about all the physical facilities that you can desire for. Okay, And then just try to find out whether this is for nurturing the body, or protecting the body, or rightly utilizing the body, or otherwise. Let us explore into this. If there is any question in this regard, I can take up. <clears throat> now going further, we can see that <clears throat> my program <clears throat> is to understand and live in harmony at all levels of being, from self to the entire existence. So I have this innate desire to live with happiness and continuity. And when I go to explore this, I find that this innate desire to live with happiness and continuity can be fulfilled through right understanding. And that essentially means to understand and live in harmony, to understand the harmony okay, at every level of my living and accordingly live at every level of my living. And when I go to understand, I can see that I want to understand the self. I want to understand the body. I want to understand the coexistence of self and body. I want to understand the human being, rest of the nature, society, everything that is there, the entire existence. And as we go to understand the existence, we see that space is there, right? In which the whole nature is submerged this is something that we had explored partly in the doctoral workshop. So I need to understand the whole existence to have this continuity of happiness in me. So now this becomes my program to ensure the continuity of happiness. When I look at the body, I find that the body requires physical facilities and uh, production of physical facilities, protection of physical facilities, and right utilization of physical facility is a very small part of my program. It cannot be the entire program. Now, why are we analyzing <clears throat> in this much detail? Because unknowingly, sometimes we assume that our program is limited to these kinds of activities in terms of physical facilities, like production or protection or utilization of the physical facility. But we can see that this cannot be my entire program. This is a very small part of my program, isn't it? Yeah, Mr. Hone Gauda. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello. Yeah. You have raised your hand, sir? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, sir. So, 
my program is to understand and live in harmony okay now in this whole program taking care of the physical facility like producing protecting utilizing is a small part of my program it can be the entire program i hope you are able to see this any response to this you can respond in the chat box are you able to see this that production of physical facility or protection of physical facility or utilization of physical facility is a very small part of your program it cannot be the entire program now even at this moment if we see we can say that uh, what we are doing right now okay we are trying to understand the reality and whatever physical facilities we have we are utilizing it for what for ensuring the right understanding for ensuring the right feeling ji professor nachketa हाँ हाँ कुमार जी नमस्कार जी नमस्ते दिस इज लेस देन वन फोर तो व्हाट डू मीन बाय दैट दैट इज एसेंशियली टू से दैट वी हैव फोर लेवल्स ऑफ लिविंग इंडिविजुअल फैमिली सोसाइटी एंड नेचर एंड एट द लेवल ऑफ इंडिविजुअल आल्सो देर आर टू रियलिटीज सेल्फ एंड बॉडी सो इट्स जस्ट समथिंग एज अ नोटेशन टू � Mm -hmm. it, even it is less than 25% like that isn't it yes 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 <laughs> so unknowingly what we do no we try to make this our entire program of life so that becomes a kind of mistake going further we can observe about the self three things first of all i am the seer i am the doer and i am the enjoyer so seer means i am the one who sees who understands who knows it's not the body which knows it's, it's not the body which sees for example i am utilizing the body as an instrument to see the slide so the body is not seeing the slide i am seeing the slide so the sight of the slide is there on in my eyes and that is being transmitted to me okay through the physiochemical system and then i am making out the meaning of what is written on the slide so it's not the body which is reading the slide it's me the body is only working as an instrument similarly when i am talking to you i am the doer i am utilizing my mouth to pronounce certain things i am deciding what to say what not to say when to say when not to say the body is merely acting as a physiochemical instrument and i am the enjoyer the happiness or unhappiness is there in me it's not in the body so i am the enjoyer and the experiencer it's not the body and in terms of seeing doing and enjoying i am utilizing the body as an instrument for the fulfillment of my program so one pole is there in front of you the self is seer and the body is used as an instrument so you can uh, evaluate this you can investigate into this so whatever <clears throat> i am doing okay if you see so whether i am seeing or i am doing or i am enjoying enjoying means essentially suffering i may be uh, experiencing so i may be suffering also so that's why we have used another word like experiencer here so it's me okay the body being a physiochemical entity is only working and working as an instrument for the fulfillment of my entire program now why were we uh, detailing this much so that we are able to see the difference between self and body clearly the body being a physiochemical entity has no conscious activity seeing is a conscious activity doing is a conscious activity enjoying or experiencing is a conscious activity the body being a physiochemical entity can only have the physiochemical activities now in my whole program okay of understanding and living in harmony at all the four levels i am just using the body as an instrument for the fulfillment of my program so we took example of that piercing of needle into the body and there we can see that some physiochemical activity takes place in the body the information comes to me i feel happy or unhappy about it isn't it it's not the body the body only has some physiochemical activities going on inside and the same is 
transferred to me as an information. I may or may not appreciate it, but it's me who is going to appreciate it or not appreciate it. It is me who is going to allow it or disallow it. So I am the doer, isn't it? I am the one who is deciding whether I have to go for this or not go for this. So I am at the base as an individual. Okay, the body is there coexisting with me, working as an instrument for me. So try to observe this. The more you observe this, you are able to see the difference between self and body. And you are also able to see that you are central to your existence as a human being. So seer means the one that sees or understands. For example, if you are given something in your hand and you conclude that it is a pen, it is not your eyes that concluded this. It is you that concluded this. The self sees via the, via the eyes. The eyes don't see themselves. This is something which we can very easily evaluate. For example, you put a pen in front of somebody and ask, what is this? And the other person says that this is a pen. Now you rotate the pen. Now the form that was visible in the eyes, that form has changed, okay? When you rotated the pen. But still the other person is able to make out this is a pen. Now I'm making uh, it in different positions. Uh, you are able to ask the other and the other still concludes that this is a pen. Now you hide the pen in your hands. And then again ask, what is this? Still the other person is able to decide that this is a pen. Now every time the image that is getting formed in the eyes is different. The other person is able to conclude. The same thing happens with you. And like that, all the five senses are just the instrument that enable the self to see something outside. So I took the example of eyes. In a similar way, we can take the example of listening to something. Isn't it? Somebody comes to you and uh, speaks something in some language that you don't understand. The words fall in your ears. They reach you, but you are not able to interpret the meaning of that because you are not aware of the meaning. So the ear is just working as an instrument. Okay, the words are falling on the ears. The, from the ears, the information is coming to you. Now, the moment you are able to understand what the words mean, then you have a different kind of response. Earlier, you, uh, may, you may, might just be asking uh, what the other person is saying, but now that you are able to get the meaning, you respond accordingly, isn't it? So you'll see that all the five senses that we have, like sound, touch, sight, smell, okay, taste. Through all these senses, we get the information. Who gets the information? The self gets the information. And then the self decides what to do and what not to do. Isn't it? So just like you see outside, you can also see within, without using the body for sensation. For example, you can see that you are feeling happy, you are getting angry, or you are feeling unhappy, you are irritated, or you are at peace, or not at peace, and so on. Now, an important thing here is that mostly we are used to see things outside. Can we see inside also? In fact, the whole exercise, if you see, at the core of it is to see the things inside. Can I see my imagination? An exercise was given to you yesterday where you had to make out your imagination, whatever is going on in your imagination. And you had to make a series of connected dots to see what all is occurring in your imagination. And you had to see that. Isn't it? So the potential to see is there in you. It's only that the object of seeing generally has been outside us. Now it has, uh, we have to take it inside also. So I have to see the world outside as well as the world inside. Thus the self sees or understands sometimes with the help of the body, sometimes without the help of the body. In fact, the more you get away, I will see that the body has a very limited use for the self. When I have to interact with the world outside, I utilize my body but I am active within me all the time. I'm also not utilizing my body all the time. I utilize it as per the need. So the more I become aware of things inside me, then I'm able to evaluate myself rightly because the unhappiness or a happiness is there in me. Okay, the contradictions are there in me. The solution is also there in me. It's only that I have to set a right priority. So when we are saying that understanding comes at the first priority, 
So we have to put it the first priority and to put it at a first priority, I have to start seeing the things within. I have to start making out what is happening inside me, in my imagination. And this faculty to see there in me, something that I have to be aware of. The body is merely an instrument. Is that clear? Any question? No hands are getting raised. Okay. Professor Nachiketa. So the in imaginations, uh, uh, the objects of thoughts uh, are uh, uh, immaterial or material. See, suppose, that uh, suppose, the suppose, suppose, suppose the self is witnessing. Suppose, suppose the self is witnessing the imaginations and the, the dots are there. So all these dots will be have a material existence, or they can also be immaterial. So the object of imagination can be anything in this existence, conscious or material. So where should we? So where should we put it? Should we put the uh, immaterial uh, objects of imagination in the uh, body, in the or in the self? Sir, the imagination is there in the self. The object of imagination could be some feeling or thought. Then it is something in the self. If it is there something as a physiochemical entity outside, for example, you are thinking about a car. Okay, so the object of attention is a car. Car is a physiochemical entity, but the attention part is a conscious activity, which is there in you. Is that clear? Uh, no, not uh, clear in the sense that uh, uh, suppose I am witnessing, I am a conscious self. Uh, okay, and uh, um, so uh, if I am a conscious self and I am witnessing uh, imaginations which are flitting, which are coming and going continuously, so and also I can uh, uh, sum up my objects of imagination will be material also, like the examples that you have given. I, I can aspire for car, I can aspire for something, and uh, there will be other immaterial objects also. So all these uh, imaginations uh, will be put uh, into that uh, material, that means in the body category or in the self category. I don't think it can be put into the uh, self category because self is a consciousness. Uh, that is where my doubts uh, lie. Sir, the imagination is there in the self. Uh, not the body. Is that clear? Okay, let, let me continue. Maybe I will uh, fail after the whole course. Let us see. Fine, fine, sir. So the imagination is there in the cell and imagination has certain object. Okay, the object of imagination is there. Now it could be something conscious. It could also be something material, the object. For example, you may think about a car, which is a physiochemical entity. You can also think about relationship which is not a physiochemical entity. But what you think, what you imagine is there in the self, which is a conscious activity. Yeah. Let me proceed. Second thing that you can see is that I'm the doer. Doer means the one that does, who takes the decision to do. So I'm the one who decides. I decide what to do, what not to do. I may or may not use the body to do what I think of is my decision. I do that thinking within myself. There is no role of the body in this. If required, the body is used to express my decision, the body merely being an instrument. So that doing part is again there in me. <clears throat> the body merely works as an instrument here. So for example, when I'm talking to you, it is me who is deciding what to say, what not to say. The mouth is only working as a as an instrument to speak up, isn't it? So the decision that is being made is being made by the self, not the body. The body is being used only to express my decision. Now I think over all the decisions that you take and just see what is the role of body there and what is the role of self there. So you have to go to college, let's say. And then you decided that, yes, I have to go to college today. So it is the self which decided. Okay, and then the self has been instructing since morning that 
now get ready for the job and then we have to do so many things today and so on and so forth in this whole process the self is instructing the body to get prepared for the college isn't it and the moment you started you just remember that today you have been offered a holiday okay because there is some odd even rule that is applicable to the college now because of the pandemic and again you decide that okay then i should sit, sit back at home there is no need to go, go to the college now in this whole process you see you have been deciding whether to go to the college or not to go to the college the body is only working as an instrument yeah vinay chitri ji yeah the uh, example which you have uh, just now quoted that uh, i see the uh, object i mean i get the information from eyes or ears by the five senses and then i make a decision uh, so uh, i have uh, read somewhere that uh, the brain has a capacity to save the memory in the form of uh, uh, association of uh, sound and uh, the picture so when uh, i if i draw a circle on the board and if i ask the students uh, to identify what is that shape they can say it is a circle then uh, if i ask them to draw a square they can draw it the square because that sound square word square uh, is associated with some picture which they have been stored in the uh, memory of your their brain uh, so if i ask them to draw a odd shape or say i uh, ask them to draw Uh, a cycloid and if they do not know what cycloid means so they do not have the memory uh, of that picture uh, in that uh, uh, brain cells so they cannot correlate with the word uh, with the uh, uh, memory and they are not able to draw it so uh, where does this uh, decision made by the self comes into uh, action so the instruction is going from the self to the brain so brain is a part of the body being a physiochemical entity it is doing some physiochemical it is working on the physiochemical interrelationship between the site that came and then you know, the physiochemical process that are going to follow but ultimately when you have to use the word that this is a circle or a square or something else it is a self which is deciding the brain is working as an instrument but without instrument without having this uh, information in the instrument stored or here Uh, the self uh, can a self decide what it is now this is a different thing so the instrument is there the instrument is helping to receive the information as well as transmit the instruction so when we remove the instrument so we are saying that the self is there and the body is not there then the point or the moment when you received the information that this is to be termed as a circle okay now that is also out of place that is not there so how do we make out so using the brain and the body you received an information that when a uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, structure is drawn in this manner then this is to be termed as a circle so next moment when you are asked you say that this is a circle so we have to take into account that particular point of time also when the instruction was given and the second point of time also when you expressed something so when we say without the body then that becomes a different issue so what we have to understand is when i am coexisting with the body then what is the role of the self and what is the role of the body this is something to be understood what is happening in the self and what is happening in the body so the meaning is being decided by the self but all the physiochemical processes that uh, follow or that were there to receive the information are there in the body yeah i i just uh, wanted to know that uh, when we talk of the self and its in content of imagination desire thoughts and expectation so most of the time the desire thought expectations are uh, uh, in our imagination and they are uh, not existing physically uh, at that moment uh, whereas uh, uh, what we have said that if uh, there is an instrument unless and until uh, we have some memory in uh, in the brain uh, only then uh, this uh, self can take a decision and it can express through the body so how that uh, this desires thought and expectations which are uh, not existing they are just in imagination and there is no physical existence of that 
Uh, I'm just getting confused in these two uh, things. Yeah, see, so we've got some information regarding memory. Okay. And on that basis, so that has made an assumption in us. So this memory is a word. And we have some assumption about memory from the sources of information that we had so far. And then with that pretext, we are trying to reason out further. So let us keep it open. So the memory, what it is and where it is, is something to be understood. So memory can be again looked into two parts. One is uh, the physiochemical retention of something which is there in the body. And the second is the conscious part in the memory, which is there in the self. So when I utilize uh, the information that I get from the body to name a certain thing, okay, so that name is there in me. I have given that name to the particular structure, calling it as a circle. But the site of the circle, okay, that came through the body. So the body has also got affected by that site. And when I have to name a particular structure, then that is getting transmitted from me as an instruction to the body. And then I'm calling it as a circle. So this memory part, okay, is something that we have to explore further. So we have some information that memory exists in brain, and then we try to decide certain things and that becomes a problem. So we have to keep it open. What memory is, let us try to explore further. So can a self uh, uh, have storage of uh, memories, uh, cons uh, certainly, conscious certainly. memories, without having the body? Yeah. Certainly, certainly. See, But how can we verify that? Yeah, so for that, you have to be aware of the self. Okay. So what we can do while coexisting with the body, you study the self as well as the body, and then you can see. For example, the feeling part. Don't you have memory of feeling? Yeah, true. We have. And that is there in the self entirely. But when it comes to selecting and testing, that is something that we are going to discuss. Then okay. the brain also has a role to play. Yeah. Very I think there is so many questions pertaining to memory. <laughs> so what we can do, I'll limit the yeah, discussion yeah. to some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bhaiya. I'll take just one more question, Dr. Uh, Deepa. Yes, sir. Ji, yeah, yes, sir. I was also having a similar question as uh, Vinay Ji was asking. Uh, because uh, when I was delivering the content to the students, like the same example as I told you, when I touch the pen uh, with closing your eyes, you will be able to see that it's the pen. Because uh, actually, we have a memory stored in our brain and uh, the self is able to uh, understand this or assume it. And and able to see that it's the uh, it's a pen. So I think uh, the similar sort of uh, question only. But I okay. was having one more question related to this. What will happen okay, if, for yeah. a person if the brain is dead? So usually, so what will happen in that case? Brain dead person and uh, the body, all of the parts are functioning. So. See, when you say brain is dead, okay, so the information exchange between self and the body is no more because it is it is through the brain itself. Okay, so, so every information exchange is only through the brain. Yeah. Yes. The so brain is working as the connecting organ. So now that you are not able to give instruction to the body, okay, then at some point of time you decide that there is no point continuing with the body. But what is there in you at the level of desire, thought, expectation will be there. And the part of your desire, thought, and expectation, which was directly dependent on the body, based on the information that you are getting on the body, that will gradually come down. The effect of that will gradually come down. So what will continue in you is the right understanding, right feeling. And that's why it is our basic program, because this is something that is going to continue with me the right understanding and the right feeling. The information that I gather from uh, like through the body <clears throat> about the world outside, those informations will gradually uh, uh, be on the way in. They will you know, be going out. They will be getting lost. And this is something that we can observe in our lifetime also. Something that you studied in class two, you forgot it, isn't it? But something that you understood that will continue with you. So what continues in me 
continuous means which remains with me forever is the right understanding and the right feeling the information that i get from the body so that will gradually get lost that is happening even today there is no mystery in it so whatever and i have I, learned uh, uh, i lose such information and whatever is stored in my self it will remain there not exactly whatever is there in the imagination okay stored in the imagination will also get lost but what is there in the right understanding right feeling okay that will remain with you this is what is being said okay okay sir can i ask a question uh very quickly i'll take up because i have some more content to share yeah please this is the last question i think to yeah. this part uh, sir what we are saying is that the self picks up sensation from the body but sir what we find is that in case of uh, uh, you know sir artificial limbs there is something called as a phantom limb so the limb was amputated but still the brain continues to feel as if it is existing so sir i want to know when when the body is not able to sense sensation then is the is the self also creating the sensation now that particular case can be studied first of all the brain doesn't feel it is you who feel the brain will only have physiochemical activities now you may assume that yes my limb is properly working and then you will have one kind of activity going on in you or you may assume that the particular limb is lost and then you will have another kind of activity so depending on the assumption in the self the response will be there yeah. i i understand for example it is cold right now isn't it in the north india it is cold mm -hmm. and one may assume that if i step outside the bed i am going to be unhealthy mm -hmm. okay then you will have one kind of activity going on in the body depending upon your imagination you will uh, fold your legs and arms and try to put yourself uh, you know inside the field things like that but if you assume that if i step outside and do my work then i'm going to be healthier and then you will have a different kind of activity the same limb will not be acting in a different manner depending upon the assumption so what you are saying at the level of assumption that difference will be there depending upon the assumption understood bhaiya thank you so much ji ah uh, excuse me bhaiya ji yeah this is shashikant gosavi ah uh, sir i was thinking about uh, uh, same idea about how the perceivance of the pain was done by the self because i i i thought that it is because of the uh, memory cells which have created that particular perception and uh, it helped me Uh, probably memory cells is a, a part of the brain which is a part of the body and therefore uh, saying that uh, without uh, any intervention of the body self will be able to uh, um, identify pain is little bit confusing second uh, yes. question is yeah yeah second question is regarding treatment of the psychological present uh, patients particularly those who are uh, suffering from phobia or something like that uh, so we are treating the body in order to ensure that the uh, self will uh, uh, be able to correct itself so uh, these were the two points about which little bit confusion is still there okay Thank you, so in the first case okay so to interact with the physiochemical world outside i need the body so Perfect. to to have the sight of pen eyes are required Uh, okay and to say that this is a pain again the mouth is required the body is required yes so we have to look at the whole process so the pain is there okay yes and the sight of the pain goes to the eyes from the eyes it goes to the brain from the brain it comes to me as an information yeah yeah, yeah very true and then i make out what this pain is meant for this is a pain or not okay what this can do what this cannot do ha huh. Okay, and then when I have to express my opinion about the pain, I again utilize my body. So the body has a role to play when I have to interact with the physiochemical world outside. Uh -huh. But I have my own role there. The body has its own role there. So mm -hmm. without the body, once if you are asking, okay, I may not be able to see the pain as it is as I am able to see right now. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay, but that information 
that this is a pen and this is going to be used for writing. This right. has to be uh, called a pen, P N pen. That is going yeah. to be seen in me, not the body. Perfectly, knowing or seeing is done by the self. Yes. Yes. Very true. Very true. And uh, uh, the ideas of mind programming or uh, doing psychological treatments. Uh, many a times, uh, medications are used. Shock treatments are given. So, uh, yeah, so it so happens now that if we do not have the right understanding, uh -huh. the state of imagination is enslaved by the condition of the body. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that uh, that uh, dependence of the self on the body. Ah. That can be altered through physiochemical uh, effects. Okay. So confusing images will be produced by the self or will it be produced by the brain? Confusing? Confusing images which are seen by people who are having phobia or psychological fear. Um, yeah, now let us, uh, so this is a uh, vast domain we'll talk about it maybe sometime. Yeah, later. yeah, yeah. yeah. So the phobia yeah. and all those things, no? Again, you have to uh, see that the fear is there in the self. Correct, sir. Correct. Yeah, the fear is there in the self. Now, the source of fear, it may be created by the self in the imagination or it may be something outside. It depends. Very true. Very true. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely right, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So uh, the third thing that is being said that the self is the enjoyer and enjoyer means the one that experiences happiness or unhappiness. I am the one that feels enthused or depressed. I am the one that feels angry or delighted. So I am the enjoyer, the experiencer. The body is only as an instrument. So we can see that I feel happy or unhappy. It's not the body that feels happy or unhappy. Okay. I feel cold or hot, isn't it? I just get an information from the body of the temperature outside and I say that this is very cold outside. The body has an activity going on, depending upon the environment being cold or hot. Okay, But I am the one who decides that, yes, this is cold and this is hot. The body has only some physiochemical effect on it out for the environment outside. And then I decide. So I feel happy or unhappy about it. For the same cold outside, one may feel happy or one may feel unhappy. One may say that, okay, I am going to enjoy the cold now. Okay, And then I have to go for jogging this morning. The other person may say that, oh, it's so cold. I have to keep on sleeping till 10 o'clock. So ultimately, it is the self that is enjoying or suffering. It is the self which is experiencing, isn't it? Not the body. Body is only working as a physiochemical instrument. So this is something that we can observe. Maybe we can have one more reflection on this. So going over all this, so we can see that I am the seer, doer, and enjoyer. The body is merely an instrument. So we can see that the self is central to human existence. Body is merely an instrument of the self. So body being a physiochemical entity is only my instrument. And I am at the center. Now, why we are studying this? So that we are able to make out whether my programs are able to fulfill the need of the self or not. So my need is continuity of happiness. For that, I need to understand the harmony in entirety and completeness. Okay, And only that will ensure happiness and continuity in me. So for that, the body has to be utilized as an instrument. Unknowingly, we make the body the core of our all programs. And then the physical facility becomes entirely our program for life, which is the other way around. So... The physical facility is there for the body. The body is there for me. And I am at the center of the human existence. When I'm able to see this, then I'm able to make the right kind of program for myself. Not being misguided by the sensation that I get from the body. Okay, Not being misguided by any kind of preconditioning. <clears throat> we can have another reflection on this. So the self is central to human existence. What do you think? You strongly agree, agree, either agree, not disagree. So you can share your opinion here. So to sum up the whole thing, what we discussed in the past 45 minutes. So human being is coexistence of self and body. And uh, I'll say that 
when you deliver the lecture to the students, you will get a lot of questions regarding memory, the way we are getting right now. Okay. So to respond to all those questions, the basic issue that is to be understood is that the self is a conscious entity, the body is a material entity. Now, if some any question is there which pertains to physiochemical activities, so that is going to be there in the body. But if there is something which is a consciousness activity, that is going to be there in the self. This is something to be understood. So the self is a seer, doer, enjoyer. It is central to human existence. The need of the body, uh, the need of the self is continuous happiness. And for this, the program of the self is to understand harmony and live in harmony at all these four levels as an individual human being or as a member of family or as a member of society or as a unit in the entire existence. Production, protection, and right utilization of physical facility is a small part of my program. The body is merely an instrument of the self. A transaction between self and body is only in the form of information. So these are the takeaways, I'll say, from the discussion that we had so far. So try to explore this. You will get uh, a lot of clarity by being clear about this. And to be more clear about this, we'll go to the next lecture and then we'll see how we can understand the self better. So there could be certain questions. In fact, uh, so many questions already came up. So in one slide, it is written that production of physical facility is less than one fourth of my program. So I explained this already, <laughs> how it is a small part of our program. Mental retardation is a problem with the body or the self. Okay. So when you say mental retardation, so if it is something to do with the body, then of course it is to do with the body. But if some wrong assumption has gone inside the self because of which something is happening. So generally when we say mental retardation, it is about the ailment in the body, in the brain. So it is something to do with the body. But there could be another uh, case like a person getting mad. Okay, Some person got a shock due to some incident and got mad. Now here there is no ailment in the body. It is something to do entirely with the self. So you have to understand the difference between mental retardation and madness. So madness, the state that is being referred to is something to do with the self. And the mental retardation is something to do with the health of the body. Feelings are in the heart. When a person gets a heart transplant, do the feelings also get transplanted? Okay. <laughs> uh, these kinds of questions also come from the students. So feelings are not in the heart. Feelings are there in the self. Yes, the feelings in the self have an effect on the heart. That is there. So when a person gets a heart transplant, do the feelings also get transplanted something like that? Because the feeling is not there in the heart. The feeling is there in the self. And that feeling is uh, affecting the heart. It is also affecting the other parts of the body. For example, if somebody is angry, the blood pressure goes up. If somebody has fear, okay, there also it has an impact on the body. So the feelings in the self have an effect on the body. Now, that instrument can only sense the effect on the body. And from that, we try to conclude what is going on in the self. But essentially, the feeling, if you see, it is there in the self, not the body. The effect of the feeling is there on the body. Yeah. The, uh, the activities that are going on in the body will, uh, may also have an effect on the feeling in the self. That is also there. But the feeling will be there in the self, not the body. Then we have been using the word self and body here. We also have these words like brain and mind. So how do they relate to the self and the body? Can you explain them and their interrelationship? Yeah, so <clears throat> when you say mind, it is something to do with the activity of expectation. So this mind word has been used in uh, two ways. Uh, one way of utilizing this word mind is to denote the whole imagination. For that also, we have been using the word mind traditionally. And the second usage is to denote the expectation. Now the brain, as we discussed, is a part of the body. So the mind is a faculty of the self. It's not something to do with the body. The, the brain is there in the body. Brain is a particular organ of the body. So I think I have explained this already. We already have so many, have so many questions on this. So we have discussed this. <clears throat> 